crew member, Stefan Regines, on board the 53-foot French yacht Triana, which is racing around the world in the McIntyre Ocean Globe race, was successfully rescued after a dramatic long-range helicopter mission was organized. A Portuguese rescue chopper was dispatched, and the yacht's crew put the patient into a life raft before being winched on board the helicopter and flown to Madeira for medical attention. The alarm was raised early on the morning of the 18th of September, when the sailor's condition deteriorated overnight from injuries sustained the day before. Did they propose something already or not yet? Okay, understood. If we need support, we call you on uh, channel 16. Where are you located? Five is rescue 24. I say again, my call sign is rescue 24. The channel is, is 24. This is your weekly Global Sailing Highlights show, The World on Water, September 22, 2023. Continuing our coverage of the New York Yacht Club's Invitational Cup, Day 3 saw the wind shifts, as much as 40 degrees with lanes of pressure next to little to no wind, the San Diego Yacht Club, led by helmsman Tyler Sinks moved into the overall lead on the penultimate day of the 8th Rolex New York Yacht Club Invitational Cup, with the low score of 42 points. This is the third appearance for the San Diego Yacht Club at the Invitational Cup, previously placing third in 2021 and second in 2019, at the past two editions. team was really uh, trying to sail the boat like a dinghy today, you know, really moving the weight around a ton, changing gears a lot, and uh, it felt like just the way we sailed the boat as a team just makes the decisions easier for me, so I'll, just having a, basically a boat full of dinghy sailors felt nice today. Super, super tight, and there's a bunch of teams right there, so um, we're, our kind of mindset is like we don't really focus on the results that much. We're focused on just sailing well and making good decisions. And so that's kind of how we're looking at tomorrow is like just go in, sail the boat as well as we can, make good choices and let the results shake out how they shake out. We feel like we're stuck in fifth, um, which has turned out to be a good thing. Um, you know, we're just sailing really conservatively, trying to not make a lot of big mistakes. 
And in doing so, we're taking a lot less risk, which maybe doesn't put us in the top two or three, um, but we're fast and so we're able to kind of stay in that four to six range and you know, that wins regardless. The 2023 Rolex New York Yacht Club Invitational Cup is presented by title sponsor Rolex. Our 2023 New York Yacht Club Regatta Association partners are Heli Hansen, Safe Harbor Marinas, Peters and May, and Hammett's Hotel. During the 45th anniversary of the J24 class, 10 nations were on hand to open the 2023 World Championship. This year's edition is hosted by the Nautical Club of Thessaloniki in Greece with 35 boats representing Argentina, Australia, Germany, Great Britain, Greece, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Japan, and the United States. After three races under blue skies and breeze of 8 to 10 knots, American Keith Whitmore's Furio leads the pack with scores of 2, 2, and 1, for just 5 points. Italian Ignazio Bonanno's La Superba holds second place with 11 points. Με μεγάλη χαρά σήμερα υποδεχόμαστε εδώ στην Καλαμαριά ένα μεγάλο παγκόσμιο event, το παγκόσμιο πρωτάθλημα J24 σαν ναυτικό όμιλο Θεσσαλονίκη. We love it here in Thessaloniki, it's a lovely place. And uh, one day when it's all over, we'll come back again. We've all sailed against each other and with each other yeah. all our lives. Yeah. So yeah, we know each other very, very well. At the end of the day, it's, it just comes down to crew work and the skills on the boat. So it can be very technical and then there's just do everything right. You've just got to do everything right. Like today, between first and last place on a world championship, there was hardly any distance between the boats. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. The San Diego Yacht Club dominated the windy final race of the New York Yacht Club's Invitational Cup to stamp their authority on the eighth edition of the world's premier Corinthian regatta. Led by 34-year-old helmsman Tyler Sinks, the San Diego's victory in the final race was their only top four finish of the regatta and gave them the low score of 43 points, good for an 11-point win over first-time entrant, Corinthian Yacht Club of Marblehead, Massachusetts. The Royal New Zealand Yacht Squadron was placed third with 55 points. This is our first time, Corinthian Yacht Club, first time at the Invitational Cup. Second place, feels amazing to be on the podium. Started their regatta off a little slow and uh, had to find our way, you know, dig deep and uh, believe that we could do it and close out the last two days with a bunch of single digit scores to uh, get back on the podium in second.
Yeah, so crossing the finish line at the end, it was just uh, elation, uh, relief a little bit too, because we've also been so close and sort of sniffed, uh, you know, the, the trophy. But this time to actually have it, you know, in our hands and know that we have the deal kind of locked up. Uh, obviously having a big lead going into the finish line there, that felt super good. And we wanted to end on a racing day like that where we could go out and, and put an exclamation point on the win. So it felt great. The 2023 Rolex New York Yacht Club Invitational Cup is presented by title sponsor Rolex. Our 2023 New York Yacht Club Regatta Association partners are Heli Hansen, Safe Harbor Marinas, Peters and May, and Hammett's Hotel. The first preliminary regatta on the road to the 37th America's Cup in Barcelona was a non-starter on day one as torrential weather plagued the venue. As the team slipped their moorings, monsoon-like rain dumped down along with lightning. Therefore racing was cancelled. On day two team New Zealand crashed over the finish line after passing the Swiss Alinghi boat to win a dramatic second race, as light winds caused havoc at the opening America's Cup preliminary regatta. Day two here in Villanova. It's awesome. Everyone's got their main sails plugged in. Big crowd on the on the dock. Hopefully we get out there and there's some nice winter sail. It's looking right on the bottom end, so we're going to need to make sure we're right on our game to keep the boat up on the foils. Just about getting out there now and, and, and doing the business. So look forward to getting into it. Very light, tricky day. Um, not a bad first race, to be honest, all the way to the top mark, and then just underlay the top mark and fell off the foil and. You know, we thought there was just enough wind to curve the takeoff, and we just kept trying and trying, and it never came. So, um, you know, pretty, pretty disappointing result at the end um, after a lot of good work on the first upwind. It was obviously the winning of that race, getting back on the foils. Yeah, I feel like we did a really good job just being patient, patient, and then um, you know, taking the one opportunity when there was enough one to get going. And obviously the others were caught up in a bit more of a battle than us at that stage, so they didn't take the same gust, and from there we'd um, be able to stay around the course. Yeah, looking forward to tomorrow, looks like a completely different day. Uh, it's going to be some big waves, depending on what forecast you look at, it could be, could be quite windy or, or just moderate, so yeah, it's going to be super exciting to show what these boats can do in a football cruise. A bit frustrating there in the end, but we did some really good things today and we also made a few unforced errors when we were actually leading, so disappointing for us, but we still did enough to make the match race final, but unfortunately the wind died on us and we couldn't get that race away. We just made a couple too many mistakes today. I thought we were sailing in general quite well and had two good starts, two good races, but um, ultimately the, the final fleet race we, we made an error in the jibe and uh, fell off the foil and handed that win to American Magic and did a good job to fight back into second place, but ultimately that wasn't enough. We kind of probably assumed that the match race was going to go ahead and that would be fine, but um, one thing I've learned with sport is that you always want to keep at the top of the leaderboard after every race, because you never know when it might end. I think those first two races today with a little bit more breeze showed you know, how tight the racing can be around the racetrack when, when there is that little bit more breeze. So, I mean, I'm excited for the next event and hopefully we get a little bit more breeze and a few more of those really tight battles and tight races between all six competitors. As soon as you get eight, nine knots of wind, the boats become alive. We're racing super tight, super close, and two of the races today, or even all three races today, were, were really good races that we had for the fleet racing. There's a big future for this class, and I think as people get to spend more time in the boats and the racing will get even closer, and hopefully at the next event in Jeddah we get a bit more breeze and can really see what these boats can do over a three-day period. Yeah, it was a tricky weekend. You know, conditions really didn't play ball on the Friday, Saturday. Today we had some reasonable conditions, uh, certainly for the first two races. We came into this knowing that we were 
slightly on the back foot some of the other teams in terms of time in the boat. But that said, we, we still perform really below where we aspire to be. We're not going to take that lightly, certainly going to go away and have a, a very good hard look at ultimately where we were getting it wrong in terms of the performance of the boat, the handling of the boat. The positives are that we've come a long way through the last four, four days of sailing with the training days and then the racing days. It's certainly a lot closer than where we started off and like I say, learned a lot that we'll take through into the AC75. So yeah, we'll go away, have a good hard look at what we're doing wrong and get things back on track for Jeddah and look for a much more positive performance out there. Five of the scheduled 10 races were on the books at the J-A24 World Championship, hosted by the Nautical Club of Thessaloniki in Greece. 35 boats reveled in another gorgeous day of bright skies, warm temperatures and breeze of 8 to 12 knots. Two races were completed Wednesday, and now taking into account the discard. American Keith Whitmore's Furio kept hold of the top position with nine net points. We love the J24 class. It is incredibly competitive. They all go pretty much the same speed. They are reasonable to handle. It might be the best sailboat racing in the world. The Yacht Club is doing a fantastic job. They're putting on a really good event. They're very well organized. They're incredibly friendly and helpful. And it's a marvelous sailing event. Είμαστε εδώ στο ναυτικό με τους Αλλήνξης για τον Παγκόσμιο Πρωτάθλημα. Είναι δύσκολη κλάση, είναι σκληρή κλάση, γιατί ο κάθε πόντος κερδίζεται με υδρότα πολύ. Παρ' όλα αυτά, οι καλοί συνεχίζουν να είναι πάντα μπροστά και ευελπιστούμε να είμαστε και εμείς κάποια στιγμή μια ομάδα από αυτές. Hosted by the Club Maritimo de Mahon, at a brand new venue for Club Swan racing on the east coast of the island of Menorca, provided a typically competitive series that saw six different winners from the seven races held. With varied wind conditions, including a day with a sea breeze of 18 knots, Stella Meris was able to hold onto their overnight lead heading into the final day. However, it was whittled away by the hard charging German duo of Marcus Brennick's Hat Ari who finished second in part thanks to two race wins, and Hendrik Brandes' early bird, who took the final place on the podium. This is not an easy win uh, in this event. We have to fight and we have to work hard. To... And we also closely observed what uh, especially uh, Early Bird was doing because they were actually our close competition. Uh, it's a super feeling. I'm incredibly proud of my crew. These are guys who mostly have never seen a big boat before they stepped on this. We decided not to pick the best people we can find, but to build our own crew. Uh, from young people, mostly from Austria. Um, took us several years actually to develop this and now it's really paying. For us, just being sort of close 
to all these uh, sailing heroes of my youth. Markus Wieser, the, I know the name since I was uh, like a five-year-old kid in Sailing in Optimist. Then Robert Scheidt coming into the class, actually with us on the boat last year on the Swan Cup in Sardinia. And suddenly sailing with such a guy and, and then competing against him, this is a beautiful experience. I think a big part of our enjoyment uh, was here the organization, the venue, the club, very comfortable, very friendly, welcoming, the islands being beautiful and the whole surrounding made this uh, a beautiful experience. Next for us will be the Worlds, of course, in October in Scalino. The goal is to, to get a medal and see what is possible now. Race 1 of the Clipper Round the World Yacht Race has finished with Perseverance taking the win of the first race of the circumnavigation. After the epic race start from Portsmouth on the 3rd of September and with the fleet bound for Puerto Sherry, the conditions were made for an interesting competition with plenty of tactical racing required from the 11 teams during this race to Spain. We definitely had some tough times. We had some much stronger weather than we expected. Um, I think it was a very much the settling in period for everybody. Uh, so we just got in Porta Cherry. We had a fantastic welcome with local cherry and some flowers. Um, it's beautiful weather, um, we came in first, uh, we just feel just a little shell-shocked and super happy at the same time. When you're in first place, obviously it creates a bond and creates motivation as well. It creates a bit, bit of pressure on me and Joss in the beginning to keep the lead up. So when the lead was still quite small, we were quite pressured. But then our lead consolidated and increased a bit and so we realised we were in slightly different weather than the others, we kind of calmed down a little bit. Uh, but for the crew it's been just like, that's like amazing because their whole dreams of doing this and racing this is paying off and that's just so cool to see. Uh, really good, we've just come in from Portsmouth, arrived into Port Sherry um, after about six, seven days at Port at uh, Sea. So it's been really exciting, we're first in, so that's really cool. First race, first, it's been really good. The amazing feeling, it's adrenaline. And, and, and yes, you did it because you never know, you are still fighting. Race is ending only at the finish line. And then, yes, it comes relief. Yes, here we are, we are winners. But these are only 1,000 miles of 13, 40,000 miles. Cheers! For the final day of racing at the TF35 Malsasin Cup 2, an ominous cloud cover and a heavy haze covered the lake. However, after a 45-minute delay, the race committee took their chance and started the first race of the day in a patchy eight-knot breeze in the hope that it would fill in. In an impressive show of skill, skipper Jerome Clerk, tactician Sebastian Cole, and the crew of Real Team Sailing, clinched the sixth and final event victory of the 2023 TF35 season and the overall season title. What a fantastic uh, year for, for Real Team. Uh, we won all, all the events of the year. It was uh, really uh, tough on the water. Uh, we have a great fight with uh, Spinrift uh, and Idiam uh, all the year. And uh, we wanted to finish on a high to win the last event and uh, we did it uh, just in the last races. So yes, on the overall of this year's uh, sailing, we did finish overall second and we did finish here in Mersagin second. We know there's a lot of potential behind us, especially in that second half of the season where we proved ourselves that we can compete uh, with real team in very tight conditions. And uh, now we're looking forward to next year's season, especially that everybody on the course is getting good. The ceiling is getting tight and we like that.
patience paid off for both the race committee and competitors on day three of the J24 World Championship hosted by the Nautical Club of Thessaloniki in Greece. Scheduled for a 1500 start and then postponed ashore, the 35 teams may have started making their evening plans. But the breeze picked up and the boats headed out for two more races, bringing the total to seven in winds of six to 10 knots. Competition here is second to none as far as world championships we've had in recent years. Uh, my name is Christopher Howell. I'm the executive director of the International J24 Class Association. Thessaloniki hasn't been on the map for me, so to speak, as a place that would be a venue for a major championship. But we have been so surprised and so happy that this venue can provide such incredible sailing. The organizing authority has done a great job here. I'm hoping that people will see this and realize what a great spot this is to hold a major championship. I really hope other classes will consider coming here. There are so many really good teams. There's 10 teams easily that could win this event. It's really interesting how there's still many teams who could win this event. It's starting to, to unfold a little bit, but you know, if we have a change in conditions, then other teams will, will kind of move up. 